everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to draw super adorable birds using Procreate. So last week I did a painting tutorial on drawing a cat using the character drawing toolkit from an artist named Lisa Glanz. This week we are going to be drawing birds using her bird edition of the character drawing toolkit. I have a link in the description where you can download this product from Design Cuts. So the bird edition is a totally separate pack from the first character drawing toolkit edition. However, I am torn on whether this is just as much or actually more value than the first edition. There's a bunch of different packs. I feel like there's more products here, maybe I'm wrong but there's so many different brushes and different ways of combining them. And I feel like because it's just one character, you she really honed in on different poses, different perspectives, um, lots of different combinations. There's marking brushes. It's a really value packed kit. So again, link in the description to download that. I'm super excited to dive in with you. Okay, to start off, I am in Procreate and I'm working in my paper texture. I've already loaded the character drawing toolkit bird edition into my brush library. So I'm just gonna take you through what this includes. The full bodies folder has heads and bodies and wings already combined in a variety of poses. So this is a really great place I have found to start if you aren't as familiar with the anatomy of the birds. The basic shapes includes wings, necks, heads, bodies that can all be combined in different ways to make all kinds of different birds. The beaks, pretty self-explanatory, but there are some really cool angles and different perspectives. Then there's tails, which have both shapes as well as these artful brushes. And then markings, which there are a lot of these feathery splotches, spots, feathers, and they can be used in their final form, which is pretty cool. So before I even dive in, I'm gonna open up Google Chrome. I'm gonna do this by swiping up part way from my bottom, which brings up the bar. And when that appears, I release it. And then I'm gonna tap Google Chrome and drag it over into the side by side area. And it'll show up. Not all apps will do this, but Chrome and Safari will. This is a good place to start. I'm gonna add these four layers and I like to use the templates on individual layers underneath my painting layers so that I can adjust the size of the template. So this I'm going to go into the basic shapes and select one of the bodies. Just tap once to make it appear because it's a stamp brush and then I'm going to rotate it slightly and increase the scale. And then I'm going to go on to a different layer and on this one I'm going to choose a head And I'm going to go into the next layer and give this guy a neck. Go back into the head layer and I'm going to adjust this just a little more. And then I'm also going to go into the neck and use the eraser tool to get rid of some of these distracting overlaps here. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is still going to be pretty rough. And then I am going to merge these three layers together by pinching them. And I am working in now the layer below this. I'm going to go into the beak folder. This guy's got quite a big beak. So I think I am going to use this kingfisher beak. Tap once to make it appear. Increase the size and then go into the layer that now has the body and I'm going to use the eraser tool again. Now I'm going to add another layer and on this one, I am going to use a native Procreate brush, the Studio Pen, and I'm going to draw in the eye. And then I'm gonna bring my, my brush size down and just make this eye shape a little bigger and a little pointed at the inner and outer corners. And then I'm gonna use the eraser to roughly add in some reflection here. Now I am merging these three layers, add a couple more layers here, and now I'm going to perfect the shape of this. While I'm in this layer, I am going to add legs. And one of my tips for adding legs is to search bird anatomy. Sometimes you'll have better luck looking at skeletal bird anatomy, but here is a really good image right here that kind of shows you 
what that bird leg looks like. And so what I do, even though most of this won't be seen, I like to try to envision kind of where that bird leg is and where the bones actually are. And that will help your bird look more natural. The feet, we are going to draw just a little taloned. And on this other layer, I am going to add a wing. And if I go into the basic shapes folder again, there are all of these wing options. And this one is what I'll choose. Stamp once and use the selection tool to increase the size. And I'm going to add another layer and we're going to draw in the tail. And then I'm gonna go in again on my body layer and erase some of these overlapping areas. And I merge these layers together. And I'm gonna add one more layer and on this one, I'm going to go back in and use the inking brush. And this time I'm going to use this red color and I'm going to draw in some kind of stick for this guy. So now he's on a stick. I'm going to merge these layers together. And then to prepare this to paint, I am bringing the layer up to the very top and turning the opacity down. As my first step, I'm going to start in with a blue. And today I am going to be painting with my watercolor brushes that I've been developing. I'm going to start by throwing down some blue here. So the big focus here is just throwing down some color. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not blending yet. I'm just getting the colors in the appropriate area. So I've gotten the blue. Now I'm going to move on and do some orange in this next layer here above. Now I'm going to go on to the next layer and this I am going to use a solid black and I am going to start to color in the eye here. All right, and the last color that we need to add is white. For the white layer, I am going to add a new layer and I am going to keep this layer color blend on normal because I want the white to really pop here. I am going to hide my background layer as well as the layer that we just did, the black layer, so that I can be sure to fill in these highlights here on the eye. All right, and then I'm going to turn my background layer and the black layer back on, and we can jump into blending. So for this, I'm going to start again with the blue layer, and I'm blending with the same brush that I painted with, and this will allow me to get a similar look to the brush strokes, so it'll look very cohesive as I blend it. Once the orange layer is blended, I will go into the black layer and I'm going to do lowest amount of blending for now on this layer. I am not blending the legs until I merge these layers together. Just going to lightly blend in some of these feathers that I drew. Then I'm going to go into this layer and paint this branch.
I'm going to add a new layer, drag it down to the very bottom, and I'm going to paint in the background. Then I am going to use the Gaussian Blur. So I just go into this adjustments menu and tap Gaussian Blur, and then I'm going to slide to give it this nice out of focus backdrop. And I'm also going to bring down the layer opacity quite a bit and go in with the eraser tool and remove the color from where the bird is because I don't want it to look muddy. Okay, so now that I've finished the backdrop, I am going to work on some shading. So I'm going to add a new layer and change the blend mode to linear burn. And this is going to be on top of all of my layers. And I am going to start adding in some shading. I am using Bristly Build Brush. And this one has, as you can see, a little more texture. So I'm lowering the opacity. And in this picture, the light source is coming from behind its back-ish, I think. So I'm following that. That means that I'm going to be shading in his little throat. I'm just doing small strokes uh, in the direction of the feathers. And then I'm going to add another layer and this I'm going to use as the highlight layer. So I'm going to select a solid white and I'm using the same bristly build brush. Okay, so now I think I am ready to hide my template layer. I am going to merge these three linear burn layers together, my first three painting layers. And I'm going to go in and use my Wooly Water Blender. I'm gonna tap the layer to bring up this menu and hit Select Layer. And this will just allow me to not go outside the lines and then start blending here. And then I'm going to go in and use the Bristly Build Brush and I'm just going to deselect and add in a cleaner edge here around the eye. And now that the black and the yellow layers are merged, I'm gonna go in with the smudge tool, make the brush size really small and start to blend these colors together on the feet. Again, using my Floody Smudge Brush, I'm going to blend in the shading a little more. Now I'm going to erase these unsightly overlaps. Now I'm going to go into the highlight layer and blend some of that out.
Now I'm going to add some dimension to the feet here. All right, now I am ready to finally start adding in some of these markings here. So I'm going to add another layer, go into the markings folder. What I'm going to go with are these flex here. So now I am going to go in and erase any of these stamps that went off of the head. And then the white of these flecks fades away on the bird, which I really like. I think that that will make this whole thing blend in a little better. So I'm going to turn up my eraser size and lower my eraser opacity and just kind of brush in so it's not completely consistent. For these, I'm going to do those little splotches by hand. So I'm going to use the bristly build and I'm working on the same layer. And I noticed that there's some darker variation of the blue here. So I'm going on this layer in between these flex and adding some darker feathers as well. I am going to merge all of my painting layers together and then I am going to tap on this and hit select and then I am going to go into my background layer and use a larger size eraser to eliminate any of the background that got on the bird. And then deselect and I think that looks pretty good. I think that this is an awesome tool, whether you're a beginner or on the beginner end of the spectrum like me or an advanced artist. I think anything that inspires you to draw more is a good thing. And this is something that can remove a lot of the friction of getting started on a project. I love it for those reasons. It's helping me learn and just draw more, which is always a good thing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful. Hopefully you learned something. If you want to get the bird edition of the character drawing toolkit, you can follow my link below. Go to Design Cuts to purchase that. And you can also download the watercolor paper texture that I used in this video. If you liked this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more and leave any questions or comments that you might have below. I'll see you in the next one.